All right. Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. Uh, I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event. Um, we are a webinar, webcast, online show. Uh, you'll find these kind of things called all sorts of different things over the internet. Um, but whatever you call us, we are here live online every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. Um, if you are um, unable to join us on Wednesday mornings, that's fine. We are um, we also record the show every week so that it is available on our website later. And I will show you um, after at the end of today's show where those archived recordings are available. We include the recordings, um, any presentations. So these PowerPoint slides will be available. Any handouts, which those of you pre-registered, I did send you a handout. Um, for those of you coming on the fly, there is a handout on this on the login on the main session page for today's show. Um, not a required thing to have, but yep. just give it to you ahead of time. Um, and if there's any websites that are mentioned, we also collect those and gather those up to share them with you as well in the archives. So um, I will show you where all of that is after today's show. Um, both the live show and our archives are free and open to anyone to watch. So if you have any topics you think anyone else may be interested, any of your colleagues, uh, friends, family, neighbors, anyone you know who might be interested in anything we've had on the show, um, send them links to our upcoming shows or any of our archives. They're welcome to um, check them out there. Um, we do a mixture of things on the show, um, presentations, book reviews, uh, mini web mini training pre um, sessions, um, tours of websites, uh, basically um, anything and everything you think of. Um, the only criteria for our show is that it's something library related for the Nebraska Library Commission, so we do things for libraries here. Um, and any type of libraries, public, academic, school, uh, special libraries, museums, we've had things on about. So anything library related, that's really our only criteria, so it's pretty broad. <laughs> so you can find all sorts of interesting things um, on our show and on our archives. Um, we have sometimes Nebraska Library Commission staff that do presentations on things, services, or programs that we are offering specifically here um, at the Library Commission, but we also have guest speakers that come in, as we have today. Yes. You're <clears throat> sort of Nebraska Library Commission staff. <laughs> and, eh, anyway, <laughs> but you don't work here in our offices. Yes. Um, Anika Ramirez, right here next week. Good morning. Morning. She is the director of our Three Rivers Library System here in Nebraska. We have in Nebraska four um, regional library systems, um, four geographic areas of the state um, that are uh, like they are uh, funded by the Library Commission. They're kind of our on the ground people, consultants locally for the libraries in their areas. Um, so it's a service of the Library Commission. <laughs> um, and uh, she's the director of our Three Rivers, which is the northeast corner of the state. In eastern. Eastern, eastern mm -hmm. and northeast corner um, of the state. Um, we recently redesigned them so there's different areas people are covering. <laughs> yeah. And she's actually based out of Omaha yep. now. Um, I came down here to Lincoln to do this presentation for us. Um, this is a session, Feelings Are Messy, How to Build Emotional Intelligence, and specifically in libraries. Yeah. In library land. Yeah. Which, <laughs> also, of course, this could be used anywhere, but yeah. We're we, we try to keep it in the professional realm mm -hmm. just for the sake of Yeah, yeah. so <laughs> all the examples and things will be things that you had encountered in libraries. And this is a session that you did at, um, it was at the Training Extravaganza, right? Mm -hmm. Our Southeast Library System, another system, mm -hmm. um, does an annual um, training extravaganza, they call it, mm -hmm. where they have presentations for, throughout the day. And this is one that I saw Nika do there and then invited her to come on Encompass Live to uh, recreate it here for to expand yes. the information. So um, I'm just going to hand over to you to take it away. Right. What you have for your Thanks, Krista. Um, and actually, I developed this originally at the request of a library director, a public library director, um, for their staff day. And oh. so it kind of has grown out of, out of that. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so feelings are messy. We're going to talk about um, emotions and how we can use that information for our professional lives for effective outcomes um, and constructive outcomes. Um, just to start off, so I've been director with Three Rivers Library System for two and a half years now and um, 
It's been a fun experience. I am <laughs> by no means an expert on emotional intelligence. Um, what we have today is kind of a tip of the iceberg thing, so you get a, an overview of emotional intelligence and some tools to start putting in that toolbox. Um, so as you go forward in your journey of building emotional intelligence, you have some things to start off with. There's tons of information, research, mm -hmm. all sorts of stuff out there um, about uh, emotional intelligence, and that's what the handout is that you can yeah. grab off the website. It's just some resources that I've used. Um, it's definitely not a comprehensive list. It's just mm -hmm. things it's a that good I start. Yeah. yeah. Some of these are books or things you have to get a hold of, and some of these have links right to websites yep. Yep. where some of these articles and things are online. For yeah. As well. yeah. Um, there's a podcast link on there. Invisibilia. It's uh, NPR. It's a really mm -hmm. great podcast. Anyway, let's jump into it. <laughs> I could talk about that. Okay. So, event plus response equals outcome. So just to give credit, this is not an equation that I came up with. I got this from <laughs> Jack Canfield. Um, he is a success coach, and he uses this as a way to help guide people toward success, which I thought really easily dovetails into um, emotional intelligence mm -hmm. as well. Um, so our lives are made up of a series of events. <clears throat> They're you know big, small, in between sizes. We tend to think um, only of the big events, you know, like a promotion at our job or um, layoffs or you know uh, graduation, weddings, those big things. But really, if we think about it, every every moment in our lives can be seen as an event, and we also experience all of those events. Uh, differently and simultaneously with other people throughout our lives. So there's all, generally speaking, there's more than one player in every event um, that we're experiencing. So the good news, uh, well, let me do this. So <laughs> if you ever react to a situation and then think, why did I do that? Why did I just say that? Um, <laughs> Why did those words leave my mouth? Uh, emotional intelligence, intelligence is something <laughs> that you can work on um, to sort of help you choose a different response um, to a specific event, right? So this event solicited a response that you suddenly think, oh, I didn't want to say those things. And you get an outcome that probably um, is not the most constructive outcome for the situation that you were trying to deal with. It ends up escalating um, or some something like that. So the good news here is that that response, while sometimes it feels like we don't have any um, control over it, we actually do have control over our responses to these events, um, whether big or small. So our response really is a choice. And emotional intelligence uh, is what helps us to choose that different response. It helps us to mm -hmm. choose a more appropriate response because, um, especially in the workplace, there are appropriate ways of responding to people and, and situations for the most constructive outcomes. So. I just really like this quotation, and if you follow brain pickings, awesome. I really like them. <laughs> They're really great. Um, so just a small plug there. Um, so this is where emotional intelligence um, comes to play, right? Um, I, I do want to point out, I, I'll use the term constructive outcome frequently um, because a, the most constructive outcome um, maybe doesn't appear to be the most positive for every player um, mm -hmm. involved. So right, there, a really easy example of that would be if there's someone in the workplace who is contributing to um, a hostile work environment or something like that and they're eventually let go, that's maybe not the most positive outcome for that particular that's person, that. but it can be a really constructive outcome for everyone involved. They can choose mm -hmm to take a lesson from that, and the, the workplace then can also um, rebuild and reconnect after someone has left who has been really negatively affecting the environment. So that's why I choose the term constructive outcome versus positive, and, and it's all about perspective, which we'll kind of get into. Um, all right, let's see. So 
very simply, um, emotional intelligence is uh, the internal management of feelings and reactions so that they are expressed appropriately. You hear that word a lot. And as you intended, very important, especially when you are stressed or angry. Emotional intelligence, um, th that skill set becomes very necessary and also very apparent uh, <laughs> when we're experiencing situations of high um, emotion. Um, that can be high excitement. Those can be like just really you know, <laughs> super excitable sure. people sometimes say or do things that they don't actually intend. Um, but especially in the workplace when we're dealing with um, our, our communities, whether it's students at a university library or the public at a public library, anything like that, um, we can find ourselves feeling really stressed, um, frustrated, angry, and that sort of thing. So that's why emotional intelligence is really important for the work that we as librarians do because we work with people. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so it's really this skill set of self-awareness, self-management, and self-control. Um, you know, and I think oftentimes in the workplace, um, we assume that our, our emotions need to be left at the door. Um, and um, if you're in a really positive, if you have a really great uh, work culture, that may not be true for you, but you're lucky. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I think oftentimes we assume that our emotions are not meant to be uh, brought into the workplace, but we are emotional human beings, um, mm -hmm. or humans are emotional creatures. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's really difficult. And so if and we when can... you're working in a library uh, with the public, you're situation of who you're dealing with is going to change daily, maybe hour to hour. Exactly. I mean, if you just work in an office with the same people every day, you know how to right. deal with them. But when you've got a new person coming in the door every 10 minutes with a different need yeah, or and right. that you may react differently to, yeah. Exactly, exactly. Um, and so if we can sort of start to shift our our um, perspective to see that emotions are really just information for us to use to um, navigate our internal and external environments. Um, we can start to really just make use of those emotions in those um, unknown interactions that come up. Um, so <clears throat> I uh, I think, right, that <laughs> emotional intelligence really recognizes um, uh, that emotions are information and that we can work toward a realistic assessment of, of ourselves. And that means non-judgmentally that we truly look at our own reactions, the responses that we have to um, different people, different situations. Um, and um, just look at that honestly, you know, and, and that might be kind of tough sometimes given mm -hmm. certain situations. So, so there are four areas, <clears throat> excuse me, there are four areas of practice that um, I kind of like to focus on. Um, and there is a bit of an order to them, but we don't, live or work in a vacuum, and so you will find that they really don't necessarily um, feel like you can just say, well, I'm just trying to be aware of my emotions right now, <laughs> and so I'm going to yell at you, um, but just know that I'm trying to be aware of this. <laughs> you know, yeah, it doesn't, go over doesn't work well, so no. much, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so we can maybe think of these as focus areas as well. So I can focus in on um, my self-awareness. I can focus in on my self-monitoring and or management. Um, I can really focus on my awareness of others, and I can focus on building relationships. We can practice those areas of focus, right? So, uh, self-awareness. Um, I just love quotations, so every one of these has some, oh, that's great. something that I have found that I just really something enjoy. Something to work off of, yeah. Exactly. Um, so developing self-awareness really comes in three different parts. So your physical reactions, your mental reactions, and I wish I would have actually changed those. I'd like to say response, 
physical responses, mental responses, emotional responses. I feel like there is a difference between those two words. Um, reacting and responding, yeah. Yeah, like reacting is, is makes me think of like knee jerk. I'm not mm -hmm. thinking about it. I'm just acting on whatever I'm feeling. Um, whereas response kind of conjures yeah. up an image of you know, taking some time, and that's what, you know, it implies it. more thought going into it. Yes, yeah. yes. So, um, just change that in your mind since you're looking at this slide. <laughs> You'll update that for the next yeah, time exactly. this presentation. <laughs> so, um, becoming aware of your physical responses to situations, um, you know, say you're a, a supervisor calls you into the office to talk about some problem or something. You can start to become aware of how you're physically responding to that request, you know. Um, it, does your heart rate speed up? Um, you know, does your jaw get, like, clench? Or what, what's happening in your body? Um, maybe that's something that does not phase you, and so, <laughs> and so you, just, mm -hmm. you just notice that, like, yeah, okay, we're going to go do this, you know, mm -hmm. and, and your body's reacting in, accordingly. Um, your mental responses, so same situation, some, your supervisor calls you in to talk about something. What starts going on in your head? You can just take note of it. Um, you don't have, it's, again, that non-judgmental point of view. Um, just taking note of, do I start to get really worried and playing through all the worst case scenarios? Mm -hmm. Do I start immediately, um, you know, as they're talking to me, am I in my head um, starting to shift blame to them? Am I saying, well, you're not even out there watching us anyway. What do you know? <laughs> you know, <laughs> yes. are you taking it as constructive criticism and truly looking, you know, so you can just start to take note of how you are mentally responding in those situations. And then those are sort of, um, can be red flags for us um, uh, to our emotional response that's building. So if, if my heart starts racing because I, I'm going to have to go talk to my supervisor, <clears throat> excuse me, um, and my, my mental uh, response is following suit, I know that my emotional response might be one that's going to uh, potentially come out through my words mm -hmm. inappropriately or escalating the situation um, or some such thing like that. So we can just pay attention to those as red flags for us. Um, you know, emotion is really nuanced. Um, and the more we can name those emotions, so once we're paying attention to these different responses, we can start to really put more, um, more names to those emotions, um, right? And that allows us to expand our emotional, uh, well, really expand our emotional knowledge of ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to do a little exercise, everyone. <laughs> um, we have a few examples, um, and what I want you to do, this is just a, a quick little exercise to just help us start thinking about our emotional vocabulary. Um, if I say I'm sad, uh, that gives me some information about my emotional state, but if I say I'm morose, that gives me oh. more <laughs> emotional st <laughs> information Fancy. about myself, right? It doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, running to the thesaurus for this kind of a thing, <laughs> but we can kind of see how just being able to name those things in ourselves can, can help us dig a little more deeply. Um, so, what I want you to do, I'll put up a scenario, and then in the... Uh, is there a chat box or is it all just questions? Um, the questions box. Okay, yeah. so in mm -hmm. your in your question box, or if you want to use mm -hmm. your microphone, um, I just want you to give me some different emotions that you or someone else, you can kind of just think about this situation in general if you want, that some emotions that might come up for people as they're dealing with these situations. Um, I uh, Because we're kind of trying to stay really focused on ourselves in library land. Um, these are library related, so don't think mm -hmm. about the policy or the procedure that you would follow for any of these. Um, just think about how you would feel um, in each one. So the first one, an agitated patron approaches a circulation desk to complain about a block on their card due to unpaid fines. Mm. So. 
Sounds like it happens. Sounds like it happens a lot. Right? <laughs> and if you don't have unpaid fines, just think about an agitated patron approaching the desk, <laughs> the yeah. circulation desk, or coming to your office, or, or whatever, um, however you need to fit this to your specific library. Um, the, I think the main thing is that there's an agitated patron and they have mm -hmm. some kind of a complaint. Those yeah. are the, the things there. So just yeah. go ahead and start typing in. Yeah, type into your question section what you what you would feel when you see this person coming at you. Yeah. I suppose. <laughs> yeah. Um, we've got some people saying here, um, oh, surprised, mm -hmm. uh, impatient, stressed, uh, anxious, um, Fear of the confrontation, oh, sure. definitely. Fear. That's what I get. Yeah, yep. I'm like, I hate confrontation. You're like anticipating the confrontation. Mm -hmm. Defensive. Yep. Oh, sure. That would be. Yep. Nothing. One person says nothing. Good. <laughs> that's great. If you just say, I'll just deal with them. <laughs> right. Concerned. Concerned. Yeah. Something too, I wonder, like, uh, well, I guess you don't know what they're coming to complain about yet. You're not sure how you should feel, except for a little. Um, yeah. I would feel like, um, I don't know if it's an emotion, but ready to go, like, all right, I can see the look on their face. Some, yeah. This person's not a happy person coming to me. Yeah. I'm going to steal myself or whatever's coming. <laughs> I'm not sure what emotion that is. And, um, and that might be your version of defensiveness yeah. a little bit, you know, putting your walls up. Deja vu. Deja vu. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Uh, it's just happened yesterday. Someone bring it. Says, bring it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know my, I know the rules. I know what to do. And that's if you do have, I know you said just to talk about your emotions, but if you do have good policies in place mm -hmm. and r rules and how these things work and how you um, are supposed to do, you know, why these fines appear. Right. And then what you, um, as the person on staff at the moment, what kind of, um, uh, power you have to deal with it. Like, right. do you have to just say, "Sorry, it's your fines, and you got to pay them," or are you given the power to say, "You know what? In your situation, because mm -hmm. you explained or something, I can waive them." I mean, yeah. if you've got some sort of setup like that where your your director or somebody has given you that kind of um, ability yeah. to on the fly make your own decisions and just diffuse the situation. Maybe you'd have less of these stressful. Emotions. Well, and I, I think that's yeah. a really good point that your your library culture, which mm -hmm. you can find lots of information about as well, your library culture can really help also to build emotional intelligence, um, mm -hmm. or at least support people's emotional lives yeah. um, in some way and give them confidence, so they don't have so many of these bad. Yeah, <laughs> and bad and it's good to know that. Um, you know, this is part of just being able to name what you you might be feeling is that um, if you know that you're going to be impatient when you see somebody approaching and they look like they're agitated, and we'll get into this, but there's things you can do to just take a breath, you know, and and move through that impatience so that you're mm -hmm. still able to communicate with that person. So it's awesome if you're confident and uh, not afraid of confrontation. Um, mm -hmm. I think a lot of us struggle with that. I do. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, that's awesome if you can do that. But if you can't, it's good to know where you're, um, where you struggle so that you can work on moving through that. And that's what this is. This where is your line about. is as opposed yeah. to someone else's. Exactly. So there is no right or wrong answer to <laughs> any of these. So a parent or guardian wants to file a complaint about a title in your collection. Again, you can change this to however you need to fit. If it's a student um, who's coming to your um, to complain about you know something, I know I've heard stories of this on universities where books are even being challenged. I think oh, yeah. mostly from reading lists in classes, but a librarian might also um, deal with that. Mm -hmm. So oh, yeah, yeah. Um, can you say that? Sure. Because I yeah. have that one written down, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the first one that came in some wrote, pissed. Yeah. I mean, how dare you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else have any other feelings? <laughs> that I'm one sure just covers it. Kind of, yeah, irritated, yeah. yeah. Um, I think this would be one I would feel defensive. Like, yeah. We know what we're doing here. Not that you don't know, but... I think that might be my first reaction is I've got to be, I've got to defend the library and yeah. the intellectual freedom of these, who, whoever needs to read these and the why of we do this and everything. 
Um, so getting your guard up right off the bat. Yeah. Um, annoyed, guarded. Mm -hmm. I mean, but you do have to be defensive. But I think because you're I'm trying to say our first reaction would be like, <sighs> but then. All right, I know my spiel. Yeah. I know how I need to respond to this because there's policies and procedures. Mm -hmm. And okay, here's the form you need to fill out <laughs> to do that. Fill that yeah. out and hand it in, and yeah. we'll get back to you. We'll take that into consideration. And... Yeah. All right. Guarded, annoyed. Um. All right. A co-worker received... Oh, someone oh. wrote, was writing a lot longer thing. I, too, would be defensive, especially having been on a selection team. Oh, sure. Yeah. But I hope I could also say, I see we do have a process. Here's the form. Right. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. So choosing that response and not acting on that initial emotion. Yep. Of defensiveness yeah. or irritation. You're wrong. We did this for a reason. <clears throat> yeah. And, again... Pulling in those that physical response, you know, when you're defensive, you're you whether you want to or not, if you're not paying attention, your body language can still oh, communicate sure. that. So it, all these things go hand in hand with bringing aware with a, being aware of them. Um, so a coworker receives accolades uh, on a project in which you also contributed to the final project product or result. Damn. So someone else is kind of getting credit for <laughs> some of the work that you've needed. also done. Yeah. <clears throat> because this thing, emotional intelligence, um, all of these things, um, it's important to bring to our coworkers as mm -hmm. well. You know, we talk yeah. a lot about customer service um, and serving our communities, but <clears throat> when you're working day in and day out with somebody, you know, mm -hmm. being able to have that kind of a relationship is really important. Yeah. And, feel and when more. someone else is praised for something that other people were involved in. A lot of yeah. things do a group project yep. or some you else as well. <clears throat> um. I don't know what the word is for, but my first thing would be, well, what about me? Right. <clears throat> I was there too. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody said, I would feel ignored. Offended, Ended, irritated, degraded, and yeah, you know, depends on the situation. I would feel happy for them unless they never say I had help and then ticked off. Right. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. I think this is one. This particular situation may have more steps to it because sure they get the praise, but then I would actually say, oh, well, what about me? I'm gonna wait and see what happens. Right. Because maybe that coworker is going mm -hmm. to step up and say thank you. However. Our whole team, or me and so and so, did this together. Yeah. So you know, it's not. It wasn't just a me thing. Yeah, and giving it time and not responding right away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, ah, someone says the opposite. I'm more likely to get upset if it was another coworker that didn't get acknowledgement, like hurt you being the coworker that did. Oh, sure. Getting more perturbed. Sad, a bit insecure and lost. Yep, and happy for them though. Yeah. yeah, I would be happy because if it was a project that I worked on, I was very proud of. Right, and in and, like, and yeah, ways, that means, right, the, the but, project that you worked on is successful. Mm -hmm. So there is some. But that. yeah, I would yep. feel sad and left out and like <sighs> defeated, maybe, that, defeated. you know, <sighs> yeah. I did all that work and nobody even noticed. <laughs> Why do I bother? Yeah, <laughs> kind of situation, yeah. yeah. All right. <clears throat> So, you were promoted to a new position. Yay. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's not all just about negative emotions. <laughs> well, maybe. Yay. Scared. And this is me talking. Because <laughs> I was just recently. Yes. <laughs> uh, oh, what is it? Um, imposter syndrome. Oh, yeah. This is a thing that's mentioned mm -hmm. a lot in, I know in library circles and I'm sure many mm -hmm. others of... I got this position, but am I really good enough? Right. And and what if I don't do? You know, what if they think I'm better than I'm than I am? And so nervous. Yep. About um, making mistakes. Yeah. Uh, someone on here says proud. Yep. Definitely proud. Nervous. Nervous. Okay, so there's a the little um, 
second part to this. So you received a promote, you're promoted to a new position in which you will now supervise people who have been co-workers for many years. Mm. That changes things a little is there bit. there something, what's worse than nervous? <laughs> it's the next pitch up from nervous. Uh, okay. Because that's definitely a thing, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, flustered, a bit overwhelmed. Maybe even as Krista says, insecure, insecure and nervous. nervous. Mm -hmm. All right. So thank you. I'm going to move on just so that we um, can get all of these things in. But mm -hmm. thank you all for participating in that. Ooh, something to say about the being um, a promoted someone where you supervise people. You used to be, um, someone said, this happened to me, and I reassured them. Oh, Basically sure. I to them and say, this is going to be yeah. fine. That's yeah. what I try to do, too, is say, don't think I'm going to suddenly become some crazy <laughs> dictator or something. Right. I know I just, I personally don't have that in me, but, <laughs> you know, we'll work this out. We've, and I think it's it's going to depend on your situation, too. What was your relationship with them beforehand? Mm -hmm. Was it a good relationship? Was it already contentious? Was it a competitive thing mm -hmm. because you were coworkers doing similar things? It all depends on, yeah. Yeah, for sure. And, and again, there there's a lot of different ways each one of these things could go and, mm -hmm. you know, more information. So. Yeah. And, oh, I know something, because yes. this is promoted to a position um, for coworkers who've been supervising people. Uh, fear of uh, the previous person in that position, am I as good enough as, good oh, as they sure. were? Are people yeah. going to compare me to them? I yeah. don't know what the emotion is for that. Um, yeah, maybe insecure, insecure that you're, yeah. yeah. All right, good. <laughs> Moving on. Um, okay, so now we're just kind of through that exercise bringing some awareness to how we might be feeling. And you can think of all the other physical and, and mental responses you might have had within those as well. Um, so now we move to this next area of practice, which is self-monitoring or managing. Um, <clears throat> so this is essentially taking this awareness that we've been talking about and just applying a pause button. And this has kind of mm -hmm. come up in our previous talk of um, just taking some time to actually think beyond that first emotional response that we have. So mm -hmm. pausing allows us that time to monitor and manage those emotions, um, hopefully, ideally, from a neutral perspective. If I'm feeling um, uh, fearful of a situation, I don't need to further add to my fear <laughs> by beating myself up about being, being fearful, right? Or yeah. to, so that's why that neutral or non-judgmental pers uh, perspective is really important for ourselves, that we, we're taking care of ourselves as well as we, as we build this emotional intelligence. Um, so uh, you can simply tell yourself pause. You can choose a, a different phrase. You can find any way that just actually um, gets yourself to get gets you to stop that count, count to reaction. Ten. Yeah, kind of count to ten. So grounding techniques. Um, these two areas are where um, like mindfulness practice really mm -hmm. can come into play, like focusing on your breathing um, and um, counting to ten. Any of those things that you might see in mindfulness practice or in grounding techniques can sort of help you just pause in that moment. Um, I think sometimes it's hard, especially if it's a confrontation. I think that's mm -hmm. where we really find find yeah. this to be difficult to pause. But we owe it to ourselves and to the people that we're working with um, to find that space for the pause and to say, I just need to take a minute. I just need to, I'm going to um, think about this for a while. Thank you for bringing it to my attention. And then I'll get back to you or however you can find um, for yourself to get some of that space. It might be a simple count to ten and just, you know, start talking to the person or whatever. It might be I need to, to step away. Mm -hmm. um, but but we owe it to ourselves for that. Um, oh, here's my, my quotation again. <laughs> First thought wrong. Some people uh, use this. I don't mm -hmm. think we can get into a discussion about right and wrong thoughts, you know, it, I don't know that any thought is necessarily wrong, it's just information for us, but essentially don't act on that first thought that you mm -hmm. have in, some, in those situations where you might end up escalating. Because remember, 
we're trying to choose a different response to affect the, uh, to get the most constructive outcome. Um, so if I feel like screaming at somebody, I, I should not act on that mm -hmm. as my first thought. <laughs> um, Probably not a good idea. Yeah, no. no. <laughs> um, so there are some things too. So um, you can start to pay attention to are you acting out of a programmed response? Is this just always how you've responded to confrontation or to other people's um, anger or whatever the case may be, you can look at that and, and say, am I acting out of this program response? Is this a knee-jerk reaction that I always have? Or maybe you're not sure and you just really don't want to talk to anybody or really want to talk to somebody, you know. <laughs> um, there are some things you can do for just a basic self-check um, right away, um, which is HALT. Um, this is really helpful for just checking in with yourself to make sure that your basic needs are being met um, first because uh, sometimes if our basic needs aren't being met that can lead into um, uh, some emotional states that aren't necessarily the healthiest. So HALT stands for Hungry, Angry, Lonely, and Tired. Um, so you just check in and ask yourself, um, am I hungry? I'm somebody that gets hangry, uh -huh. if you know what that is. So I, <laughs> when I'm hungry, I just get super angry, which is real fun for everyone. Um, <laughs> so, I get very, yeah, I get hungry and I get just, I don't get angry, I get whiny. I yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Because I just like, I am not happy, I am feeling just nothing can go right when I'm hungry, yeah, yeah. you know. So, <laughs> so I've over the years I've learned this about myself, and I've made sure that I keep snacks with me everywhere I go, so that if I um, miss lunch, which I do often, which mm -hmm. we all, how many of you have you know gone through the day and been like, oh, I forgot to eat lunch today, yeah. you know. In our busy lives, um, we can forget some of these things. Um, so you can pay attention to that. Am I hungry? Do I just need to go have a granola bar and come back and talk mm -hmm. to somebody? Um, angry. You know, sometimes that anger from our personal lives can follow us into our professional lives and when we get into work and can influence how we're talking to people or how we're interacting with people. Um, so there's things that we can do just to check in with ourselves about that. You know, this thing happened in the morning and I think it's following me in. Um, if you have a relationship with a supervisor or a coworker that you can just say, hey, I just want to, um, I just need to get this out really fast and then I can go back to work. Um, you can write it out, uh, tear the paper up, you know, write out everything that's making you angry, tear the paper up and just try and move on um, until you can actually deal with that situation. If it's anger with someone at work, you follow whatever those procedures are to address that problem. Mm -hmm. um, lonely. Loneliness is not something that is always talked about, but um, it is, there's more and more studies and research that show that in our ever-connected lives, we, people are feeling lonelier and lonelier. Mm -hmm. And so this is something that's real that um, you do maybe want to check in with yourself and see, you know, am I just feeling disconnected and lonely mm -hmm. or whatever. So, you know. And lonely could be, I think what you just said, being disconnected from things is even more... Is lonely. Some people think, well, I'm not lonely. I'm I'm not alone. And it's, yeah. Well, there's other thing. Definition of lonely and being disconnected from what's going on and yeah. feeling left out. Yep. Would be part yeah, of being lonely. Yeah, definitely. And sometimes that's your reaction to things. Yeah. So caused by that. You know. So. Uh, take a moment and go wander the stacks and engage in some customer service and and really connect with your patrons or, you know, set up a dinner after work or mm -hmm. maybe you know seek outside help if that's something that needs to happen you know there's there's nothing wrong with that so just taking care of these things of course you can't if you're just doing a quick self check some of those might have to wait but <laughs> um, it's something to consider at mm -hmm. least and tired you know you can't go sleep in your car in the parking lot <laughs> um, I don't think <laughs> but you know you can stand up you can do some chair yoga you can stretch um, or like yeah, do, take a walk around the stacks. Exactly. Any of those things walk. that might just kind of jolt you awake. Um, people who are tired tend to um, 
not be able to manage their emotions as effectively. Because mm -hmm. um, you're just, your, your body's tired, your brain's tired. It just, for me, that's when I'm tired and when something emotional or serious happens. For me, tired leads me to angry. Mm -hmm. Sure, um, yeah. These tie in. And <sighs> so many times I've had arguments with my husband or with someone, and he's like, what is going on? I'm like, no, it's not real. I'm just tired. I'm going to go yeah. walk away and take a nap because it yep. really has nothing to do with what I'm actually saying. I'm just, I got four hours of sleep last night and I'm exhausted and I yeah. just can't think. Yep. So I'm lashing out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so we can, we can take steps to kind of choose a little differently so we don't have to apologize. I'm one of those people, I'm like, oh, I'm going to say I'm sorry again because <laughs> I was really hungry and <laughs> uh, I'm sorry for what I said when I was hungry. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a valid thing. Yeah. <laughs> so that's um, why the word hangry has become a word in our exactly. society. Exactly. <laughs> I'm not the only one. Um, but I do want to um, make sure that those things aren't getting in the way of my relationships with people or in my, in the, in the way of, um, my interactions with customers or patrons or however you want to talk about them. So um, over time, this pause, this self-check is not like something that you have to spend a lot of time on. At, with this practice, the pause becomes a little bit more um, first nature rather than second nature. And, you know, you find yourself just doing these things already. So it's not always a struggle to do them. Um, so then, if we're doing this really quick self-check of HALT um, and addressing some of these needs, then we can check back in with ourselves and say, okay, do I still need, feel the need to talk about this? Am I still upset? Do I, you know, and sometimes you might find that, no, this actually wasn't that big of a deal. I just had some other things that I needed to address first. Um, you know, I think that uh, managing your emotions is probably harder than um, the awareness part. You know, I can be aware of a lot of things and not change any of it. You know, so if I'm aware of my emotions, but I'm, you know, if I'm aware that I'm irritated or frustrated, but I'm not applying a pause button, you know, am I really practicing self-management? You know, if I'm not choosing a different response to be a, a part of that constructive outcome, I'm probably not really uh, managing myself or monitoring myself. Um, okay, so we got a little time left. <laughs> Awareness of others. Um, so the emotions and responses we choose in any uh, toward any event um, will elicit a response from those also involved in any given event with us, right? Um, so for me, um, and I think sometimes for a lot of us, uh, the biggest part of this is just recognizing that the responses of other people are also valid within the context of their own lives. Um, you know, and we can take that neutral perspective, that non-judgment that we've been using toward ourselves and our own, in our own, in our awareness of ourselves, um, and apply that to other people. Um, everyone else gets to do this too. Mm -hmm. um, so if you and a coworker are replaying the same event with each other, or a volunteer is frequently um, disappointing you, a, a patron is infuri infuriating, uh, whatever the case is, um, you know you can reframe your perspective and allow that that other person is also experiencing the same event from their own life, their own perspective, and they are entitled to the same range of emotions and responses as you. So that this allows us to bring compassion into our vision of the, the event. Um, and you can then um, find a little bit of that space, that detachment from it. You know, it's not personal. Mm -hmm. um, and you can ask how you are affecting the event. What are you choosing to focus on or how are you choosing to respond to this event that's also contributing to this outcome, right? Um, what you focus on grows. So we can choose to focus on another person's um, inappropriate response 
uh, and address that, or we can look at our responses and see how we are first affecting that outcome, mm -hmm. right? Because we don't have control over other people. We don't have control mm -hmm. how someone is going to respond to us That's or another event. You hear people say a lot that I can't control what you've said or done, but I control my res my response, exactly. response to it. Yeah, that's all we really you have control of, yeah, over. Take your, separate yourself from what they're doing and just think about what you yeah. are going to do. Yep. Um, and I'm just going to read this off my notes because I, I really want to make this clear. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, follow proper procedure for complaints or guidance if, if their behavior is directly affecting you. Um, in no way does this, mean, does this focus mean that you have to accept unacceptable behavior? Simply that sometimes uh, what we perceive as unacceptable behavior does not in fact directly affect us. So you do not always, <clears throat> unless, unless, you do not always um, need to take immediate action unless it's violent or harmful to yourself or others. If it is violent behavior, it is, if it is harmful to yourself, or your your coworkers or other patrons, you know, yes, please follow proper procedure, yeah. and you can use all of these tools to help guide you through that um, experience. It can be really stressful, can be traumatic to deal with someone's violence, um, and so you know these tools will still come into play. But I'm not suggesting that you have to ex just say, well, you're being belligerent and calling everyone around you names, but that's just how you choose to respond. Like, you don't have to just do that, you know. You have you to can understand the these action. limits. And, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, but these tools will still help you to move through that because it's still, some, it's still an event that you're experiencing. So you mm -hmm. can still use this to move through that experience um, for that constructive outcome for yourself for your patrons who were maybe there, whatever. So, um, so yeah, I just want to make that really clear that I'm not suggesting we um, put up with that, but we just become aware of other people, of their own right to their own emotions, um, and and we can start to recognize other people's emotions as well, separate from our own. Um, okay, let's move on since we're I'm almost done. That's okay. Um, yeah, we did. I just gonna, it's, it's about well, it says 10:53 on my clock here. Um, as I said, officially the show goes from 10 to 11, but we did start a little late. Okay. Um, about five after so. Um, and we'll just keep going until Anika's done with everything. And if anybody has any questions, um, if you do have to leave right at the top of the hour because that's all you you know are allotted for this, that's fine. We're recording. You can always come back and and you know watch whatever's left over that you missed later. Um, but we won't cut things off right at okay. 11 just because it's that time. No, we can go as long as is necessary and get it all on the recording. I can, I can. <laughs> I don't know. Not saying we're going to go for two hours, <laughs> but yeah. no, we go over um, oftentimes here. Um, so the next area of practice that we move into then, right, so we're aware of ourselves, we're practicing this pause where we can start to manage our own emotions, and then we're turning that and becoming aware of others. Um, and their emotions and how we're interacting with them. And from that, we can build relationships with people. Um, uh, right? <clears throat> I, lost my, I lost my train of thought after all of that. <laughs> um, so when, when I start with respect and dignity and allowing that other person, the dignity of their own responses, of their own emotions, um, we can really have uh, more healthy and open relationships with people. And this doesn't necessarily have to be like over years of working with someone and building a relationship. Uh, a quick interaction with a student at in your office or um, a, a young family um, at story time or whatever, all of those things give us an opportunity to build relationship. Um, so it, it doesn't have to be a long-term relationship or anything mm -hmm. like that. We can look at every interaction as building relationships. Um, so this is practicing empathy, mm -hmm. right, of um, allowing each of us, all of us, to go through this process uh, this emotional process um, on our own terms um, and recognizing our part in it, we're practicing empathy. 
Um, and it has to start with us. So it's really easy, and I think we hear it, we might hear this quite a bit in some stressful situations where, well, this person was acting this way, so I acted this way. Mm -hmm. This person's um, anger caused me to um, respond in kind. And we, we really risk a lot when we use that perspective, when we use that approach. Um, so it has to start with us. Um, you know, what happens when this person's angry, um, but I, I use the tools that I have, use my pause button, I'm aware of this person and allow that they're allowed to be angry, right? I may not mm -hmm. like it, it may not feel great towards me, but they are allowed their anger. Um, and, and I still choose to act from that place of respect. What happens, right? Um, can we get to the most constructive outcome? It doesn't mean that we're changing people's minds all the time. That person may still walk away angry, <laughs> you know. But mm -hmm. if I can say, I did, you know, I've done the best I can. I brought this to, I brought this response to this equation, this event plus response equals outcome equation. Mm -hmm. And I think we've got to the most constructive response or most constructive outcome. That's all we can do and hope that, that there can still be dialogue sometimes or, or whatever. Um, it's not easy. No. <laughs> None of this is easy. Um, but we we owe it to ourselves and to our our communities to start engaging in um, in these things. Uh, so, how do others feel when we respect their ability to choose for themselves? That's awareness of others. That's that key in building respectful relationships with people. So, in the end, right, I love this. I love this a lot. <laughs> um, we all have the capacity to improve our emotional intelligence. Um, it, it will look different for each one of us. We're all at different levels. Whether you know it or not, you're probably on this journey already. Um, if you're in, if you this, have an emotion. If you have emotions, you are exactly. <laughs> and especially if you if you said, I'm going to take an hour out of my day, sit down and and listen to somebody talk about emotional intelligence. You're mm -hmm. on this journey, so there's lots of resources and everything out there for you to continue this. It's a conversation that we can start talking about more openly about how we feel and how we are dealing with things. You know, um, so. We are all free to make choices and change our minds, but so is everyone else. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> so uh, this skill set of emotional intelligence provides uh, each of us the opportunity to choose our responses to events, make a conscious impact on the outcomes in our lives, whether we're at work or home or wherever we are in the world. So, oh, we're good. I talk mm -hmm. fast sometimes, so that's all I have. Are there questions from people? Okay. Um, let's see. Um, all right. Oh, thank you. <coughs> thank you. Um, is there any, was this the last slide then? Uh, yeah. Is there anything? Okay. Oh, so I'm to make sure. contact information. Uh, okay. Feel free to talk to me about this if you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, does anybody have any questions? Anything you want to uh, expand on or um, get some more definition or discussion about? Type them into the question section of your GoToWebinar interface as you were before. Um, have you had any situations maybe that you've been in that you're wondering, <clears throat> what could I have done? What should I have done? Do you have? Does it make you have any advice about anything? <laughs> if you don't, that's fine too. Um, I, I when I like I said I attended this session with you before. I thought it was really good. I you know I'm I'm sometimes wary of these ones that say there's going to be audience participation and then she starts <laughs> handing out. Because there was a handout at this session. Did you have something uh, wrote on or something? Yeah, that, I think yeah. So. There's another handout, um, and I'm like, oh, audience participation. But it was actually good. Yeah, it was fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, and a lot of these things, I think, I, I always mention things in my own, you know, career and, and things here and previous jobs that you know I recognized in this. But also things that it's, I mean, this is specific to library land, but I know there's a lot of these things that I probably should be using better in my personal life too. <laughs> So um, well, and I think sometimes, um, like in 
the professional world, I feel like I'm I'm not perfect at this. I mm -hmm. you know, but I think I'm pretty good at this. But there have been moments in my personal life where I'm like, shove that back in my mouth. I didn't mean to say that. It seems you know. to be easier to just lash out. <laughs> Personally, yeah, um, because I don't know if you, you, I guess you assume your friends and family will cut you more slack than your co yeah, right. Um, yeah. But I know there's situations because I've you known people on, you know, other colleagues have mentioned mm -hmm. that there's I just can't deal this person. This they said, I said, mm -hmm. oh God, what do I do now? You know, it can still happen, even yeah, professional as well. Oh, so definitely. I think these are good skills, good things too. And the thing is, like I think you said at the very beginning, this is stuff. You're going to have to work on and practice and the, the mindfulness, the word mm -hmm. mindfulness, which has become a real big buzzword. It but has. it's not the kind of thing that you can on the fly remember, ooh, I have to go, what's halt? Right. You need to think about it ahead of time and practice, either practice mm -hmm. it or sit and think at it about it. And like you said, you, you decided to send this webinar for an hour and hear someone talk about it, or you're watching the recording later, you're already halfway there that yeah. you're thinking, I need to know more about this because something's happening or something could happen. So yeah, yeah, you can take a Very little true. planning and thinking on about yourself. Reflection. Yes, reflection. All right. Well, yeah, it's it's a skill set, you know, mm -hmm. and any skill, Just like anything, yeah. you know, it takes practice. So, yeah. but it doesn't look like anybody qu any questions, urgent questions oh, have right. come in while we've been chatting. That's fine. Um, so I think we will wrap it up for sure. your, today's session for you. Thank you very much um, for coming down here. For yeah, us and thanks for having me. Um, and thank you everyone for attending. The show is being recorded as we speak and will be on our website, which I'm going to go here now. If you hit escape over there, we should be able to uh, pop over. To... Oh, really fast, if people are still on. There is a there Facebook is. group called Mindful Librarians that I just found. It's, um, really? Yeah. Oh, so okay. you can ask to join um, if that's something that's interesting to you. I think they, emotional intelligence and mindfulness, for me, go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. So um, there's, right. like you said, there's lots of good resources out there. Cool. All right. All right. So I'm just trying to get over here. So uh, this is our Library Commission website. Um, where you can search on our website for Encompass Live, or um, if you type in, since you got the keyword, type in Encompass Live, you'll notice. Oh, yeah, it's in there. <laughs> so far, yes, we're the only thing called this on the internet. Yay! So <laughs> um, you can Google us, you can, um, and you'll find our Encompass Live website. Um, today's show is being recorded and will be loaded up here. Uh, we've got our upcoming shows listed, but then right beneath them is a link to our archives. And this is where you'll be able to go maybe later today, maybe tomorrow. Depends on how long <laughs> it takes me to get it. I've got to get it processed, uploaded to YouTube. They've got to be happy with it. Yeah. Um, it'll be here. It'll be the top one at the list here. Our most recent ones come up at the top, and we'll have a link. This is from last week's to the recording. And in this case, we'll link to the presentation. Sure. Um, the actual handout is already on the session page for today because I did that earlier. So for those of you that didn't grab it ahead of time, that handout that Anika mentioned, actually I should be able to. Ah, eh. oh, I've got oh. it there. And, all right, there's a link here that I'll, I'll look at fixing. But um, it's just a one-page <laughs> handout with um, all of the citations, the different resources that her quotes and things came from are all on there. Mm -hmm. So you'll be able to have that. Um, so uh, when the recording is available, I will email everyone who attended today and who registered and let you know that it's up on the web page ready for you to look at. Um, so that will wrap it up for today's show. I hope you join us next week when our topic is the new NLA Intellectual Freedom Manual comes to the rescue. Yeah. No pressure there. <laughs> <laughs> um, our Intellectual Freedom Roundtable at the Nebraska Library Association has had a, um, a manual for dealing with issues. Um, oh, even since, since uh, 2004 was the last time it was oh, wow. done. Yeah. So, so it, was, they, it needed yeah. some updating. Yeah. yeah, so they did. And um, some staff from the roundtable, our, our IF roundtable, um, Michael, Tim, and Todd will be with us here. I believe they're all coming here because they're from local mm -hmm. um, <laughs> to talk about the new manual and what changes are in it and how you can use it in any situations you may encounter that are um, intellectual freedom um, related. So uh, please do uh, sign up and um, for that uh, session next week and any of our others that are here on our calendar. Um, we've got all July books. There's one for the last uh, Wednesday in July as well. Um, I just don't have it on the calendar yet because I'm waiting for um, 
official description. Mm -hmm. um, it's about what libraries are doing um, for the eclipse. Oh, uh, fine. Yes, the eclipse coming up in August is cutting right through the middle of Nebraska. Yay. For us. Um, <laughs> so the last Wednesday in July is going to be um, uh, one of our staff here, Mary Sowers, and possibly bringing on some libraries and people that are doing things related to that. So she's working on a presentation for that. So right. look for that in future sessions I'll be adding here as well. Um, also, Encompass Live is on Facebook. Oh, and you can mention. So, if you are a big Facebook user, and this is probably going to pop up and say, "Join Facebook." <laughs> yes, there it is. Um, give us a like over there, and you will see here. I had a notice how you can log in on the Fly Today show when our archives are available. I posted on here. Um, here's my recording from last week's session when new shows are coming. Um, so, anything. Um, Facebook related. Um, if you're a big on Facebook user, like us and you'll get notifications over there about what's going on. Um, other than that, that wraps it up for today's show. We do just have some last comments come in. Thank you. Great info. Enjoy the presentation. Very informative. Thanks, ladies. So awesome. Cool. I'm glad. I hope this was helpful to everyone. Like I said, I thought it was very interesting and very useful to me when I attended it. And so I want to make sure we got this out for more people. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So thank you very much, Lika. Thank you, everyone. And that happy will, Wednesday. Yeah. <laughs> um, I hope you'll um, join us next time. And um, yeah, see you next time in Uncover Life. Bye bye. Stop recording.